everyone, I'm Dave Thomas, and today I am building the MAV, the Mars Ascent Vehicle, from Estes Rockets. This is a beginner's kit that will go together in less than an hour, generally speaking. So we'll go ahead and open this up and make sure we have all of our parts and such. Okay, so first thing, pull out the instructions, and that should have a parts list in it. Alright, so in here we have the main body tube, and that was the sound of the nose cone hitting the floor. Now, if you, you can't see it in the video, but feeling this, it's actually got some clay nose weight in there. Um, it needs to be in there, so don't try and dig it out. Alright, our main body tube has the shock cord pre-attached inside there. Um, and it's bonded to a pre-attached launch lug. Alright, then we've got the fin assembly, the fins themselves, motor retainer, and parachute there. Okay, that all looks good. And I'm guessing inside here are the decals. We'll have to check inside. Okay, that's warranty information. All right, we'll go ahead and pull these out. So those are the, the fins slash landing legs. And here we go. These are some decals that will go on. Um, there's also this that just looks like a square decal. This is a reinforcement for the launch lug. Okay, and then we have the fin can and motor mount assembly there, and then finally our parachute. So it looks like everything that is supposed to be here is, and I will clear this away and we will get started. Our first task then is to glue the fin can together, and so for this you're going to want some tube type model cement. Uh, you could use the brush on type as well, but since they're recommending the tube type, we'll go with it. Um, the main thing here is have some tissue or paper towels handy. This stuff tends to glorp when you least expect it. And don't use a lot. We just want a thin film here along the edges. You want to make sure you hit those little holes that will be for the pegs here. Okay, and a very sparse amount on the threads. And just a little bit there and a little bit there. And then we're going to put these two together, putting the little pegs into the little holes, thusly. Okay, and then you're just going to hold that for about a minute while it dries. Now before the dry, glue dries completely, if you have any places where you've got some that kind of oozed up, just really quickly wipe those off. If you wait too long, it'll smear. Um, did a little bit there, but that's okay. Uh, a little bit coming out, as long as it's not somewhere critical, like inside the motor mount. Once it dries, it's really not noticeable. All right, now this needs to dry probably for at least 15 minutes before we go on to the fin. So I'm going to set this aside and let it go. While I'm waiting for the glue to dry on the fin can, I'm going to go ahead and assemble the parachute. Now, for the most part, this is already self-assembled here, but we do want to go ahead and open this up. It's a fairly large parachute, but the rocket's kind of heavy. All right, so go ahead and find all of the loops of the shroud lines here, and I'm just going to loop those over a finger, get all the tangles out. And now I'm going to grab the middle of the sheet of the parachute here, and then pull tightly. And all of those corners should be down in about the same spot, and they are. Now there are two ways to do this. Um, the way they show in the instructions, you simply take the loops here and pass them through the eyelet on the nose cone. All right, and then you open those back up, um, and then you can either pass the parachute through the loop or you can pass the nose cone through the loop. It comes out the same either way. 
All right, and then you'll tighten those down to form a knot. Now, I am not going to do mine that way. Uh, if you've seen any of my other videos, you know I don't like to tie parachutes directly onto nose cones. Oh, now I've really done it. Okay, so the same way, just grab them all on one finger, come back here, hold the sheet, pull everything taut. All right, now, get yourself a snap swivel, and you can get these just about any place you can find fishing supplies. The size doesn't matter as long as the snap part here is big enough to go over the eyelet of the nose cone. All right, so now I'm going to run my loops, and I've just shrunk them all down there through the swivel side of the snap swivel, so the round side there. All right, I'm going to open up all those loops again, like that. Okay, and at this point you can even check again, so I'm going to grab my parachute once more, make sure everything's aligned. All right, and now I'm just I'm going to keep tension on here so they don't change length on me. And I'm going to pass the entire snap swivel through those loops. I'm going to pull the loops down, and then I'm going to pull that whole thing taut. So that should form a nice neat knot right there. Check once more if your corners have moved. You can loosen this and try again. Once you've got it exactly where you want to, go ahead and take a little bit of white glue or wood glue, and just put a little dab right on that knot. A little tiny amount. doesn't take much at all. And just kind of work it into the knot. And this will keep the shroud lines from coming undone. The advantage of doing it this way is that first of all you can change it out. This is a pretty big parachute, but as I said, it's a heavy rocket. Um, but maybe you're on a really windy day and you don't want this to float off into the next county. You might want to put a slightly smaller chute on it. All right, well, you can do that by simply changing it out. So you can open the swivel, all right, put that on like that, and it's ready to go. If you want to change it out for another chute, your other chute can be on a snap swivel as well. You can take off the big one, put on the small one, vice versa. Um, and also, at least theoretically, um, parachutes tend to twist as they come down, and, and it wraps up the shroud lines. Um, by having the swivel in here, it takes some of that torsion stress off the shroud lines, and it helps keep the parachute from collapsing. Okay, now I'm going to wait on attaching the shock cord, which they, they'll show here in just a minute, until after I attach the fin can to the rocket body tube itself. Alright, we're ready to attach the fins. Now there are, there's a tab here, and that tab fits into this slot and then slides forward. Okay, and so the first thing you want to do before we actually glue any of this is just test fit them. All right, they should be snug but not tight. All right, so all those look good. We can pop those back out again. All right, once you've got the fins fit correctly, then take your tube cement here. And just a, that's dripping already. You want a nice small amount. That's the, what I've got there is almost too much. All right, and then immediately put this on and slide it into the cement there. Okay, now I've got a little oozing out there, but that, when that dries, it's not going to be noticeable, so don't even worry about it. Okay, so here we're going to try that again. Just a small amount along there. Slide that one in, and then the same thing with that last one. There we go, just like that. Now all of these should be even with the edge there. And now I'm going to let this dry for a few minutes before we attach it to the body tube. The glue is dry on my fins, and so now we're ready to attach the body tube to this. All right, now make sure you get it going the right way. So the, the caution pattern here should be going on this. I'm just dry fitting this right now to make sure it all fits. 
Okay, so you've got that on there, and the launch lug here should be in between two of the fins. You don't want it in line with the fin or it won't fit on the launch pad. Now they use the tube type cement inside here as well. Um, my preference is to use a gel type super glue. I just find it works better for joining plastic to cardboard. But you can use either. Um, either one you use it's going to be the same so we're just going to apply a bead of glue right inside here. Okay, so just right inside the tube. And I actually use the applicator here to kind of smear that around, get a nice even layer. But keep it on the inside of the tube. And then we're going to go ahead and insert the fin can once more. Now again, I'm going to find my launch lug and make sure it's in the right position. Once it's in there, just kind of move it back and forth a little bit to get a good glue contact. All right, and then we can just stand that up for now. Okay, now next, this is where we use this little square sticker. This is going to go right here on the uh, launch lug and the trick to this is don't let it stick all at once right, handle it by the edges all right, and the first thing I want to do is just kind of center this on the launch lug without touching it to the body tube yet all right, now I'm going to once I've got that where I want I'm going to settle it down onto the launch lug now on the edges, I'm going to use my fingernail first to seat that sticker down along the edge. If you don't, there will be a big air gap there. Okay. And then you can smooth down the rest of it. Now if you do end up with the big air gap there, um, it will still work. It just looks kind of weird. Okay, so smooth that in as best you can. Alright, then moving on here, we've got some self-adhesive decals here. And these are going to go in between the fins. Now, I recommend before you do those that you thoroughly wash your hands so you don't have as many fingerprints on the underside of them. So I'm going to go do that really quickly here and then come back. Okay, now that I have clean hands, uh, I'm going to peel these up, and the idea is you want to hold them as much by the edges as you can. So you minimize fingerprints that are going to happen anyway. And the thing to watch is once these are down, they don't come back up very well. So we want to try and find a landmark. I'm actually going to line up the bottom of that decal with the aft end of the rocket here and use that as a guide okay that's pretty close I think I'll go with that okay so I'm just going to touch down the center there and then move it to the outsides and squeeze the air bubbles out Okay, that's also over a seam a little bit there, and that'll help strengthen that seam. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing on the other two decals.
That one's a little off center, but not too bad. All right, and again, it happened to overlay that seam there, which is actually a good thing. Okay, um, now we can go ahead and attach the motor retaining ring here. That just goes right on there. Right, and then we can attach our nose cone to the shock cord. Here I'm just going to pass that through the eyelet there. And I'm going to uh, make a double knot here or two half hitches. All right, and pull that from multiple directions so that knot gets down there good and tight. All right, and just as an extra precaution, like we did with the parachute shrouds, I'm just going to add a little bit of white or wood glue onto that knot itself. And just kind of work that in. That'll just help keep it from coming undone. Now, on the free end of that, um, cut that back to about a quarter inch or about six millimeters or so there. You don't want to go all the way to the knot, but you don't want any of this getting up beside the shoulder here where it would be between the shoulder and the, and the body tube. That could prevent it from ejecting properly. All right, and then finally we put our parachute on. If you haven't done so already. Okay. Now, if you're preparing this for launch, you'll want to put about five pieces of ejection wadding in there to protect the parachute. I'm not going to do that right now, um, but I will fold this as if I were. So I'm going to take my parachute and fold it roughly into a triangle there, and then take my shroud lines about halfway down, and I'm going to pull them in as a loop like that. And I'm going to fold the sides of the parachute over the shroud lines. Right, I'm going to fold that down over itself. And then just kind of roll that together. If you want, you can do one more fold here. Right, and then we'll just take and slide the shock cord down in there. followed by the parachute and then the nose cone. Okay, now that nose cone should be snug enough that if you turn it upside down and shake it, it doesn't fall out, but not so snug that you can't remove it fairly easily. So this is pretty good right now, but you always want to check that before launching on launch day. And so there is my Mars Ascent vehicle or MAV all done there. Uh, in total, this took me about an hour to do, even with the drying time. And hopefully yours went together just as easy. Hope you have a great launch and a safe recovery. And please stay tuned for more of my videos.